All right, what's going on? Thanks for checking out this video. My name is Connor Newell. I'm the owner of Play Your Media here in Portland, Oregon. And as a content creator, I get asked way too much, Connor, what do you do for your storage solution? Where do you back all your files up to? How do you organize everything? So today I'm gonna to show you the best storage solution for content creators, so let's dive right into it. So behind me here is my Synology DS1517 Plus, which essentially is a five bay storage unit that holds five 10 terabyte hard drives. But what's different about this drive compared to a Lacey hard drive or a G technology drive that can also store a lot of data, this actually has an amazing piece of software that comes with it that makes the whole operation so much more seamless. So this is actually called a NAS unit, which stands for Network Attached Storage. So this is connected directly into my home network here with two ethernet cables. You could technically use one, but it's always nice to have two just for that redundancy. And believe me, that's gonna be the theme of this video is redundancy. So I have two ethernet cables running out of my home network into the NAS unit. Now what that allows me to do is not only access it here at home super quickly and efficiently, but it also allows me to access it anywhere in the world that I have an internet connection. So as a videographer, I travel quite often and you can't always pack every hard drive with you, right? So it's nice to be able to have something at home that you can get back into no matter where you are, as long as you have internet. So if you forget to transfer a file or need to dive into an old project or need assets from something, pop onto the internet, go into your hard drive and you can access it immediately. Now I mentioned before, this is basically 50 terabytes of storage, but this is technically set up in Synology hybrid RAID system. So if you don't know what RAID is, it's basically a redundancy configuration of your hard drive. So you can do it a bunch of different ways, but Synology has their own smart type of RAID, which is called Synology hybrid RAID. Now I have mine set to two disc failover. You can set it to a one disc or whatever, but I have mine set to two discs. So even if two of these discs were to fail on me, which I haven't had one fail on me yet, I've had this thing for three years, the remaining drives would be able to copy over that data from the two drives that failed and you wouldn't lose anything. So you never have to worry about losing data or a drive corrupting. I have mine set to two disc failover. So if two of my drives just die on me, I still don't lose any data, which is huge for professional videographers or photographers because when a client wants to refer back to a video or wants you to edit something, change something, you need old files, if you don't have that data, that kind of sucks. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what this is, how it works and things like that. But let's go ahead and dive into the computer and see how this thing works on the back end. Okay, so we're here at the computer and this is how this whole thing looks. So I can go to quickconnect.2 and then type in the name of my server. So once you set up your NAS unit, you will give it a name. So this is what I named mine. So you just type that in, hit connect. Just like normal, you're gonna log in with a username and password. So once you log in, this is what it's gonna look like. So what exactly is all of this? So there's a bunch of different widgets that you can use. Here's basically the control panel that lets you see all the information. You can see the model name and everything like that. You have all these settings options that you can set up. Um, task scheduler, you can change the theme. A bunch of different things but basically the main purpose of this is right here which is the file station so i have mine organized by year so everything going back to 2014 up through this year i have on here now what you'll notice is if i bring up my current working ssd drive that i work off of a lot of these look very similar so you'll see i have a lot of the same things over here on my working drive that i have over here on my nas unit now Basically the process goes like this. So this is my most recent project for Clinton Will Auto Group, my dad's car dealership. So what I do on my working drive is create a new folder for that project. So once I started this project, there was four different videos. So let's just go like this one, for example. And then I had everything basically shot off one 1DX. So here's all my video files. So once I do that for each video, I'm gonna take this main folder, the CNAG folder, and just drag it right in to here. So now it copies literally everything perfectly directly into my NAS. Now all my information is backed up 
onto my NAS already. So another really awesome thing you can do with this too is instead of working out of a web browser, you can actually just map these drives directly to your machine that you're working on. So whether you're on a PC or a Mac, if you're wired into the same network that your NAS unit is on, you can actually map these network drives to your machine. So I have basically all my more recent years um, mapped directly in here. So if you're on a PC like me, basically all you would do is go into your PC here, hit map network drive, and you grab your IP, but there's a technical way to do this. So you're gonna copy this minus the 5,000. So copy that, go in here, and so all mine are used, so I'm just gonna do this. For example, paste that in here, take out HTTP, actually do forward slash forward slash instead of the backslash, another forward slash, and then the volume number that you want. So say you want, let's just try 2016. So 2016, and then just hit finish. Don't hit browse, don't hit anything. Just type this in exactly like that with the forward slashes, the volume number, and then hit finish. And then you're gonna to have to type in your credentials again. I can just open a new folder here. And now I don't even have to go into my web browser. I can just go in here and move files in between the two folders seamlessly. Yeah? What you doing? Making a video. I'm sorry, I have to see you. Oh, Chad here? Yeah. Oh, okay. God, that face tracking. It's amazing. GH5 didn't have that. All right. Move files in between seamlessly. Oh yeah, the, the app. The other really cool thing about this that I love now being a PC user and not having AirDrop is the ability to use the app on your phone. So you can actually access your hard drives through an app on your iPhone. So earlier I was making a post for Instagram. So what I did was out of Premiere, I just exported the video straight to this drive on my NAS unit, right into this folder. So I didn't even export it to my normal working hard drive. I exported it directly to my NAS. It was still super quick. That way I was just able to open up my app, go to the folder where I saved it to, download it, and now it's on my phone. Just like that, so quick. That's probably one of the best things about this system is if you're a PC user, you don't have AirDrop anymore, that's a good workaround. All right, well, that's about it for me. Thanks for checking out this video. Hopefully I gave you a little insight onto what exactly this thing is, how it works, why I use it, um, and why you should probably think about getting one too. Now, all said and done, this whole unit costs about, it's between two and $3,000 for everything. Now, obviously it depends on what size you get and even how many drives you get. You could start out and only get two hard drives and kind of work your way into it. This whole thing being a functioning about 23 terabytes, I've only used, well, let's see how much. So how I have this configured, its capacity is 26.2 terabytes, and I've only used 11.3 terabytes of that in about three, three and a half years that I've had it. I've only used 44% of this whole unit. So really you could buy two or three drives to start out and work your way into it as you need, but definitely, a bulletproof option if you are worried about losing data if you're looking for a new storage solution this is the best one out there i know other people use like lacy drives and g technology drives and even like drobo which is similar but i've heard some nightmare stories about drobos going down and not functioning and i'm telling you over three years using this never had a single option i've moved it to different locations um my power has gone out on me and it's shut down and everything always comes back up completely seamless never had an issue knock on wood hopefully i continue to but if you have any more questions drop them in the comments below and i will answer them and if you enjoyed this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing i would really appreciate it other than that we'll see you in the next one